Hello friends. Today we will discuss level crossing. A level crossing is provided when a road and a railway line cross each other at the same level. The surface of the road is kept at rail level and grooves are left along the road surface and guardrails are provided in these grooves for the movement of the wheel flange. A level crossing may be either guarded or unguarded. In case of guarded le level crossing, swing type gates or barriers are placed to prevent the movement of vehicles on the road when the train is passing over the level crossing. In case of unguarded level crossing, no such arrangement is made and therefore there is always a danger of accident on these crossings. The Indian Railways has achieved its target of eliminating all unmanned level crossings on railway network. Now depending upon the number of trains passing over the crossing, the number of road vehicles and importance of road, the level crossings are classified as a special class, A class railway crossing, B class crossing, C class crossing and D class crossing. There are around 477 manned level crossings across the country's railway network as reported in Times of India on May 1, 2023. And as I told you, all unmanned level crossings have been eliminated from the railway network. The vulnerability of a level crossing is measured in terms of train vehicle unit or TVU which is obtained by multiplying the number of trains with the number of road vehicles passing over the level crossing in 24 hours. So daily traffic on road and daily traffic on railway track. Multiply by that, multiply these two and you get TVU. And when you convert these vehicles into some standard unit, train, road vehicle, bullock carts and tonga are considered as single unit, where cycle rickshaw and auto rickshaw are considered as half unit. Now based on this TVU, the crossings are classified like this. A special class when this TVU is more than 50,000. A class when TVU is between 30,000 and 50,000 and line capacity utilization is almost 80% on single line and road vehicles are more than 1000 vehicles per day. B class when TVU is more than 20,000 and road vehicles are more than 750 vehicles per day. Now this B class is further subdivided as B1 for TVU between 30,000 and 25,000 and B2 when TVU is between 25,000 and 20,000. C class all other level crossings for roads not covered above and D class is mainly for cattle crossing and pedestrian crossings. Special class. These are the BGS railway crossing in terms of road traffic. Most of the busy level crossings on the national highway are special class railway crossing. Normally the gates are open to road traffic but whenever a train passes by the gates are closed to road traffic. The gates of the level crossings are interlocked with signals and they are manned round the clock by three gate men working in eight hours shift. A class level crossings are also busy in terms of road traffic. All level crossings or important routes are mostly A class level crossings. Now here also the gates are normally open to road traffic. All other provisions are the same as for a special class railway crossing except that these crossings are provided with only two gate men who work in 12 hour shifts as these crossings are not as busy at special class level crossings. Class B these level crossings are relatively less busy. Normal B class level crossings can be found on metal roads. The gates are normally closed to road traffic but can be kept open to road traffic provided that the gates are interlocked with signals. They are provided with two gate men working 12 hour shift. C class mostly provided on unmetal roads. Some of these level crossings are unmanned because of low volume of road traffic. And D class are provided for cattle, they are normally used by cattle or pedestrians. This is a typical level crossing. That is the limit of railway line which is protected by fencing. 
level crossing to rails of the track and these are provided here with the guard rails so that the wheel flange movement is smooth that is the gate a b and c d are two gates which are normally placed perpendicular to the center line of the road and this distance the distance of this gate from the center line of the track is 2.9 meter for broad gaze and 2.4 meter for meter gaze in case of multiple line this distance is measured from the center of the outermost track this is the gap here which is generally provided for the movement of pedestrians on either side and angle of crossing should normally be not less than 45 degree it is always preferred to have a 90 degree crossing so that the visibility to the approaching vehicle is sufficient at all such skew level crossings the gate post shall be fixed square to the road means even if the road crosses at certain angle then this angle should not be less than 45 degree but in that case also the gate post are fixed square to the road now here when i say gate post gate post means any form of movable barrier including a chain capable of being closed across the road at the level crossing there are certain dimensions which are pertinent to different class of level crossings for class a and class b gate width maximum 9 meter 7.5 meter maximum distance of gate post from the center line of the track 3 meter in case of class a 3 meter in case of class b minimum road width between gates 9 meter and 7.5 meter level and gradient between the gates the road should be leveled and beyond gate it should be level up to a distance of 8 meter and after that a gradient of 1 in 30 is permissible in case of class b this gradient is 1 in 20 minimum length of road outside the gate 22.5 meter and 15 meter similarly minimum fencing on lines parallel to track 15 meter 15 meter light indicators for road traffic it should be red when the gate is closed and white otherwise and same as for class a in case of a skew level crossing the radius of this curve should not be less than 60 meter and crossing angle as I, as i told you it should not be less than 45 degree attempt should be to cross the road at 90 degree with the railway line each crossing differ in various specifications and layout for example for class a level crossing the angle of crossing should preferably be 90 degree and not less than 45 degree the road should be straight for a length at least 22.5 meter on either side of the railway line and this distance is measured from center of the outermost track on each side no curve less than 60 meter radius and no gradient steeper than 1 in 30 should be provided on approach road the road should be level at least for 8 meter beyond each gate view from the road approach to the railway line should be very clear and the closed gate should be kept at right angle to road line so these are some of the specifications as suggested in your railway standards and they differ slightly for different types of railway crossings level crossings are protected through some traffic signs also and traffic signs are for road traffic as well as for railway traffic first the signs for road traffic a unguarded crossing is provided with this type of sign and these three lines here indicate that this sign is placed 300 meter before the level crossing and this sign has now been replaced by this type of sign in irc 67 rather than showing smoke here it is now the diesel or electric train when you have two lines here this sign is placed at 200 meter away from the crossing when you have one sign only then it is 50 to 100 in plain and 30 to 60 meter in hilly area for guarded railway crossings this kind of sign is provided and these bands here indicate the same it is for 200 meter it is for 50 to 100 meter 
So these signs are placed for the information of road users that there is a level crossing either guarded or unguarded. In addition to these signs, speed breakers are also provided in the approach to the railway crossing and users are informed about these speed breakers through the sign. This is for a speed breaker, this is for rumble strip. So either rumble strip or speed breaker can be provided before entry to the level crossing. In case of unguarded railway crossing, this is the sign which I told you. It is placed 50 to 100 meter before the level crossing and is a sign for rumble strip. Guarded railway crossings are protected with either gates or barriers and these barriers or gates are also provided with a stop sign. A special class railway crossings are provided with traffic signals and these traffic signals turn red when the gates are closed. Otherwise, these signals remain white or sometimes even yellow also. That indicates that there is a danger of crossing the railway line. The first sign faced by local pilot is this type of sign. A N written on a square yellow board. And this sign indicates that, they, that the driver is approaching a level crossing. And before 250 meter from the level crossing, a whistle indicator is placed. W L whistle, there is a level crossing or in Hindi Sifa, Siti Bajao, Fatak Aya. It is usually provided on approach to unmanned level crossing and for manned level crossing without a clear view. It is placed to 50 meter before the level crossing. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. You can write your comments, suggestions in the comment box.